Hey, this is OXDF, and today we're looking at the Horror Feeds Challenge from the Hack the Boo CTF. Uh, finished up last week, Hack the Box put this on, um, beginner focused CTF, and uh, this is a web challenge. And so they give us um, a Docker instance to spin up, so our own personal version of the website to play with, as well as a zip file with what it looks like source code. So um, let's go ahead and get started. We'll take a look by first uh, visiting the page. So I'm gonna go make sure to put in HTTP because Firefox will do S by default and then it won't be open. Um, and, uh, but here I hit the, I hit this instance and I get a sign in page. So I can try things like, uh, putting in like accounts I know don't exist and clicking here and it says invalid credentials. Um, I could try, um, you know, some basic stuff like, you know, does admin admin work, um, invalid credentials again. So, um, failures there. That's fine. Um, I'm not gonna spend too much time trying to exploit this or dig in because I have the source code so I can go look for vulnerabilities there. Um, but one thing I will do is I can try to register. So if I try to register admin admin, it says the user already exists. If I try to register OXDF, OXDF and register, uh, it says user registered, please, please log in. So I can just click log in. And uh, we have a dashboard with horror feeds. And so um, looks like some, it's going kind of slowly, but we got you know, eventually four of these things will load and that's about it for the page. So um, not much else I can do here. Um, there's, I mean, there's certainly things I can look at. Um, one thing I will take a quick look at, um, you may notice I've been running this all through Burp. Um, if I come over here to look um, after I log in, when I get the dashboard, you'll see I do have a session cookie set here. It's always worth taking a look at real quick. Um, it is a JWT. Um, I can tell that because it starts, it often starts with EY and it's got three sections divided by dots. So it's a bunch of base 64 encoded data there, some base 64 encoded data there and some base 64 encoded data there. And so that's a Java web token or a JWT. Um, we can take this into, um, an application like JWT.io or use a Python library. Um, but again, I'm not going to dig into this yet because I'm, I got the source code, so I can probably get some more information about how this was created and what's going on. Um, we'll go ahead and unzip the web dot, uh, horror feeds. In fact, let's, before we do that, it's always good to just take a look and make sure, um, in this case, it is running in a, uh, it is in a folder. So that's good. I don't want to pollute my, uh, my entire top folder here. So we can do web horror feeds like that. And we will CD into the previous, in, oops, CD into that directory. And I'll start a tmux session just in case I need it. Um, we can look at what we got here. And I'm going to go ahead and use VS Code to take a look at this. It'll just be a little bit easier. Um, so before I get started in VS Code, one thing I really like to do, and I, I realized I hadn't done this in some of my previous videos and it was annoying me, um, is preferences, settings, and we're going to look at preview. And what that is is this Workbench Editor Enable Preview. By default, if you single click on a file, it's going to open up like oh, we'll, we'll actually do it. We can open up here. And if I single click on the next file, it's going to open up in the same tab and it's just going to keep overwriting. Um, I find if I was working on a huge project and I had lots of files, I think that might be useful. Um, you can double click on a file and it will open not in preview mode. And then I guess the next one you click preview will show up here. Um, but I find when I'm doing something like this, um, where I'm doing source code analysis and things like that, that's, that's actually rather annoying. So I like to uncheck this. And now, uh, each time I click on a file, it's just going to open in its own window. Um, and so I can come up here and close them out if I don't need them anymore, but they will, you know, that way I, if I'm jumping between a couple files, I just have them. So, um, we will start with the Docker file. Um, this defines the container. So we're going to start with the Python 3.8 Alpine. We're going to install some packages, including MariaDB. So that's MySQL. Um, we're going to pip and we're going to install pip and then install flask as well as uh, pyjwt, bcrypt, some other things there. Um, we're going to copy the flag into the root of the direct root of the file system, so we know where that is. We're going to make an app directory. We're going to go into the app directory. We're going to copy this entire challenge directory into it. Um, we're going to copy the supervisory d config, and we're going to run this entry point .sh, um, command. That's how we're going to get started. So let's check out entrypoint.sh. Um, it is going to initialize and start MariaDB. It's going to wait for it to start. It's now we're actually going to fill the uh, table here. Um, some things to note. So it's going to create a. It's going to create the horror feeds database. It's going to create the horror feeds 
database users table with an ID, a username, and a password. Um, I'll note that the username has this unique key right here, which means if I try to add a user that already exists, it's going to fail at the MySQL level. Um, then we're going to insert into horror feeds the username, password, admin, and this. Now we could try to crack this, but I, I can guarantee they're not going to give us, this is not just a cracking challenge. So um, it's certainly not going to be a password that works. Um, we're going to create a user here and we're going to give that user insert abilities on this users table. Um, I suspect we'll see that the web, uh, the website source connects using this password. Uh, and that's the end of the file. And then it's going to run supervisory D on this with this supervisory D.com. Uh, we can take a look at that. Also, we know that got copied into Etsy. And all this is going to do is much like some of the other web challenges um, I've shown already in previous videos, um, it's going to run app.run.app.run.py app as root. So um, let's go ahead and jump into the challenge directory. That's really where we want to go. So we'll start with the run.py. Um, this is a, it's going to call app.run, and it's going to run like this. Um, app is imported from application.main. So we can see there's an application folder. There is main.py, and there's an app right here. This object is what gets imported. It's the Flask object. It's an instance of Flask, and it gets configured here. Um, MySQL gets set up. Um, there's these app decorators are setting up different error handling um, responses. Uh, we are going to be most interested in these two right here. So these two routes. So we have a web and a API prefix, and those are defined. We see web and API are imported right here at the top. So from application blueprints routes, import web API. So here's application blueprints routes.py. And we're going to import API and web, which are these two right here. And so the web object defines two routes here. Uh, actually, no, four routes. It looks, uh, what's, I should count before I start three routes. Um, there's the static, you know, the root of the web server, which is just, uh, it's going to return the login at HTML template with no variables. Um, there's this dashboard one, and that is authenticated as right here, which if we look up here, that is actually part of the application util. So we might want to check that out. Um, and it's presumably this is like a decorator that says like, it only works if it's, if it's, well, let's go look, we'll go, um, the application uh, util right here um, is authenticated. So this is, we're defining actually um, a, a decorator here, which is kind of cool. So it uses this wraps, but basically what it's going to do is it's going to take, it's going to get the session token and it's going to say, if it doesn't exist, it's, it, you can't be here. It's going to return a 401. It's going to verify it. Um, and I'm guessing token verify throws some sort of error if yeah, so if this doesn't verify, so it's either going to return success or it's going to abort and return a 400 invalid token. So we've effectively kind of gotten what that does. Um, now we're going to say token verify is going to get that token. Um, and interestingly, we'll notice render template is called here on dashboard.html and it's given the flag variable and the user variable. So we have an idea now where we're going to get the flag variable. Um, templates in Flask, the way it works is, so this template dashboard.html it's going to look, it's going to be in the templates directory. If I can find, there it is. Um, if we open this up, we can see that we pass in two variables, flag and user. If we come here, we can do a, um, we can click in here and do a control F for flag. And we can see inside these uh, double curly brackets, that value is going to be printed right there. Um, similarly, we can do user and we can see there's an if clause. If user equals admin, then this whole block right here all the way down to, let's keep going, to this end if will show up. If the user is not admin, that stuff's not going to show up. So these templates, you know, it's mostly HTML code, but it allows you to put in little bits of templating language. And that's where we can, you know, control, oh, only the admin sees this part. And so in this case, only the admin sees the flag. And so it's pretty clear we need to be logged in as admin to get the flag. Um, let's go back here and we can look at the, um, can look back at the so we have the logout one just sets our session off to none and redirects to the root or to the login page um, the login so there's a couple api routes um, i'm going to guess these api routes are things that happen in the background versus web routes are ones that happen you know by visiting that page because i remember when i sent hit login the result just sort of printed on the screen it didn't reload the whole page um, so um, it makes sure it's json it gets the username and password 
um, it's going to, if the username or password aren't set, it's going to return a 401. Then it's going to call login on username and password. So I don't need this uh, search anymore. Um, and if there's a user object returned, it's going to set session auth equal to that user. So presumably that's the cookie that gets returned and it's going to return response, otherwise invalid credentials. Um, and then register is going to um, do the same kind of thing required. It's going to call this register function. So we have this um, login and register functions. And where do those come from? Um, they are both called from app, imported from application database import login and register. So let's check out application database. Um, so here we create a MySQL object from the Flask MySQL DB collection. Um, we have this handy kind of a helper function here that is designed to um, query the database in a safe way. Um, you'll see it has a query and args, and they're kept separately, and that's to prevent SQL injection. Um, and it's going to basically return values. Um, so here we do we log in, we do a query for the username, um, and then if that username exists, we're going to check and see if the password matches, and then log in to register. We're going to query for the username. If the user or if that user exists, it's going to return false. So that's a second check. We had the uh, MySQL making that column unique, but then we're not even going to get to there because we try to register the, the admin user, for example. We're going to see there's an admin user, and we're just going to fail here. Um, so otherwise, we generate a password hash, we insert in here, and um, we commit that we save those changes to MySQL. Um, so there is one thing that kind of jumps out to me very quickly here, and that is if we look at the way the um, query DB is called for both this user query here, as well as for the exist query here, it's done in a safe way where um, the parameters are passed in separately than the query itself. Down here, I have an F string, which is a format string, and I'm actually building the string and then passing it into query DB. And so this is likely SQL injectable. Um, in fact, we can try that. Let's see if we go to our, let's see, do we have a register request here? I'm gonna go back to burp and grab this request here and send it to repeater. And in here, so if we send this, let's see, send this, we're probably gonna get the username already exists. That's right. Um, what happens if we put a second double quote there and maybe escape it like that? So now that it's not handled by the JSON, if we send this, well, you have an error in your SQL syntax, check the manual that corresponds, blah, blah, blah. You, for the right to use the syntax near, blah, blah. So we have successfully shown SQL injection. Um, we can inject into this insert statement. Um, so how is this going to be useful for us? This is the challenge here. Um, we basically know we either need to create a new account named admin, which MySQL is not going to take because it has that unique thing there, um, or we need a way to change the admin's password. We can't stack queries in um, this in uh, uh, MySQL. Um, that's that's kind of a MSSQL thing. That's not going to work. So stacking queries is when you could put like a semicolon here and the first query, and then do like a new like update blah, blah, query here. Um, so that's not going to work. We that's not not really worth going down that rabbit hole. Um, the secret to this challenge is finding this um, feature here, and I'll let's see on duplicate. Duplicate key. So let's see if Google fix it for me. Um, so this on duplicate key update statement. And basically what it says is, if you specify an on duplicate key update clause and the row inserted would cause a duplicate value in a unique or primary key, an update of the old row occurs. So this is cool. Basically what I'm saying is, if I can figure out how to do an insert statement for admin, it's going to return that the admin already exists. But then I can say, oh, well, when admin already exists, do this thing. So let's play with this a little bit. We're going to grab um, this right here. We'll grab this right here, this statement. And we will let's just create a um, notes.txt. We'll paste that in. Um, the other thing I'm going to grab, let's go back to my here. Um, if I try to log in, I'm going to set the password to OXDF. Let's send this. And because it's nice enough to have already hashed it for me and put it this the password OXDF into a nice hashed form. So I'm going to grab that there. Go back here and we'll paste that in as well. OK, so here's here's what we got. And we can control these two things. Now, this one hashed, we don't actually control because whatever we put in, it's going to get hashed and the hash is going to show up here. So we don't we want to kind of get rid of this. 
Um, but that's okay because we can mess with it here. So here it doesn't really matter what this is. Um, here, let's see. So we want to start with if username, clear this out, insert in a table of username admin, and then we're going to put a, end this, and we're going to put, uh, doesn't matter what we put here, junk, and we'll close that. And then we can say, let's grab the um, syntax here, on duplicate key, update. We'll say, we'll grab this right here. And this becomes, this is all still part of our insert. So this is all still part of our username. In fact, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna escape these so that it's clear this is what we're putting in. Um, admin junk, on duplicate key, update. And we'll say, password equals, Put a, let's put line wrap on here so we can see uh, password equals and we'll copy this and we'll need to do escaped quotes there and then we'll need to undo the few password huh? I think that looks good now we can put a comment to end the line and that should be it so the part that we inserted as the username is the is right here. This is all our username. Our username is admin, close quote, junk, unduplicate key, update, password equals, blah, blah, blah. And so if we grab this, let's copy this, come over here, and we are still on API register. So we're going to add our, our, this right here between these two quotes, we're going to paste all this stuff. And we're going to send it and we're going to see if we made a mistake. User registered, please log in. And so if this works, when we go back here, we're going to be able to say, See, we'll log out as me. Um, we're going to log in as admin, and the password is going to be OXDF because we updated it to that. And it looks like it worked. Uh, we get the video feeds, and down here we get the flag. So um, this is a neat little trick. Um, it's not something I've run into before doing CTFs, and so I think it's a pretty valuable tool to have in your toolbox. Um, thanks for sticking around with me till the end, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.